Hi guys, Dane here. Biggie's just behind the camera, so if you see a fluffy tail come your way, that's why. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Navigators of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this was book three of the Schools of Dune trilogy, basically the final, uh, the final sort of sub-series or whatever, the last one that these guys work together on. Cat's knocked the camera, sorry about that. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my, my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... The climactic finale of the Great Schools of Dune trilogy, set 10,000 years before Frank Herbert's classic Dune. Every Dune fan knows of the Space and Guild's mysterious navigators, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood's program to breed a superhuman, and the Mentats, trained as human computers to replace forbidden thinking machines. But until now, readers knew little of how they came to be. Navigators, mutated by spice into beings far superior to normal humans, make space travel possible across the burgeoning Imperium. Their prescient awareness allows them to foresee safe paths through the universe as starship engines fold space. Only industrial magnate Joseph Venport knows the secret of creating navigators, and he intends to build a commercial empire to span the galaxy. But at every turn Joseph is embattled by the forces of anti-technology fanaticism, but leery and zealots led by the charismatic and dangerous Manfred Torondo. They aim to turn back humanity's new renaissance and drive the Imperium into a dark age. And between those titanic forces stands the uncertain new Emperor, Roderick Carino, forced to take the throne after the assassination of his brother. The navigators are the key to charting a glorious future for humanity, or the end of civilization. So, we'll go through and check out some of my tabs. A lot of these are bits at the start of uh, chapters because there are a lot of quotes um, that really set the scene for the chapters but also I think they're really influenced like in and of themselves. So here we have a quote from director Joseph Venport from an internal Venport Holdings memo. There are those who see influence and power as a reward rather than a responsibility. Such men do not make good leaders. And I just thought that was interesting because of the society in which we live in. For some reason we keep voting people like that into power anyway. And um, so Venport is making a spice bank and he's thinking about how to get the people to die basically. Um, so he says, maybe Muddock's people would all die out in the sands, devoured by the enormous worms, or they might simply collapse from exposure. That would be fine with him, because then no one would learn about the Spice Bank. It was a system ancient pharaohs had utilised, putting builders and architects to death after the construction of a pyramid. But Joseph didn't want to kill people who had helped him. As a general rule, that was bad business. We get this great quote between uh, Shadaliki and Roderick. So Shadaliki goes, that will never happen, God is on our side. Maybe so, Roderick said, but right now I would rather have more warships on our side. Yeah, reasonable. A quote here from Mother Superior Valya Harkonnen. Love does not make the world go around. Love is an obstruction in the gears of the universe. And this is from The Personality of a Madman, a critical article against Manford Torondo, redacted. It is not wise to beg some people for mercy. It only makes them less likely to grant it. Quote here I wanted to share from Erasmus's secret laboratory network. So Erasmus is like one of the robots, the thinking machines. All this obsession with the biological activity of procreation, I do not understand it. Humans are preoccupied with the smallest nuances of sex, almost elevating it to a form of religion. But then, I have never really understood religion either. This is why people say sometimes I'm like a robot, I think. And this is a little quote I wanted to share um, from one of the... Oh, hi Biggie. Uh, this is a quote I wanted to share because it shows that Herbert and Anderson can do gore pretty well as well. And I do like a nice little gore scene. Marching forward, he launched a volley of explosive projectiles towards individual homes. He stalked after the milling crowds and sprayed them with acid hoses, leaving hundreds of people writhing and smoking in the streets, their skin melting. One man staggered away, clawing at the jelly that ran out of his oozing eye sockets. He dropped to his knees, vomiting acid, as his whole body collapsed into a wreckage of smoking meat. Mm. And so Erasmus, the thinking machine, makes an attempt at writing poetry. This is from the New Laboratory Journals, Volume 2. He wrote, The glory of love. The nature of love. The foolishness of love. Which I think is actually a pretty good poem. And I thought this was cool as well. This talks about um, the nature of water and the, the beliefs that some of the, the Fremen hold towards water. He listened to the faint processing sounds of his still suit as it collected and recycled perspiration from his body. The desert natives had a saying that a man's moisture belonged to his tribe. Drago appreciated this philosophy because it spoke of more than just one man's water on one planet in the Imperium. It was an acknowledgement that no person could function entirely alone, that he required a connection to something larger than himself. So too, any tribe was not entirely alone, but was instead an integral part of the larger organism that comprises the human race, and humanity was ultimately part of. And then it trails off. 
So yeah, Navigators of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, not the best in the uh, in the kind of extended series, but I did still enjoy reading it. Kind of glad to be finished though, to be honest. Um, after this, I read uh, The Road to June, and I'm actually currently reading Dreamer of June, which is uh, Brian Herbert's biography of his father. But Navigators of June, it was okay. It was like a 3.5 out of 5. Some good food for thought, but probably only for completionists. But let's face it, if you've got this far in the series, you're going to want to read this one as well. So there we have it, that's what I made of Navigators of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.